papa. In other words, it's nonsense talk. Uh, in other words, it's pretty much what goes around and what we hear. Uh, most people uh, are talking nonsense. Nowadays, the nonsense they're talking about is basically um, shortages. I can't find toilet paper. I can't find this. I can't find that. So uh, there isn't. There, there always has been and continues to be an emergency situation that the living entity faces. It's just that when we have uh, a calamity like this virus, it comes foreground, and now it's in our face, and we're seeing it. We're re we're forced to look at it. But there is a bigger problem that we've had uh, ever since we've come to this material world. And that's remaining in this cycle of birth and death. Uh, in between birth and death, you get disease and old age. So here we are. We're in between birth and death. Uh, so those words which do not describe the glories of the Lord are useless words. Uh, like the cawing of crows. You see, the crows may make all this caw, caw, caw sound, you know. Uh, what does it mean? Useless. Even if the crow, the other crow can understand it, the crow is simply talking about eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, you see. Uh, the Lord alone can sanctify the atmosphere of the whole universe. So we need purification. We need purification from this disease right now. <clears throat> uh, but our consciousness needs purification so that we can get out of this cycle of birth, death, disease, old age. So uh, words, discussions that describe the glories of the Lord, Sri Hari, uh, can purify and, and uh, cleanse, sanctify the entire universe. So uh, those words, that type of uh, 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 Krishna Kata, rather than Prajalpa. The Krishna Kata is considered by saintly persons to be like a place, excuse me, uh, Prajalpa is considered to be by, uh, by saintly persons to be like uh, unto a place of pilgrimage for crows. So, what is Narada Muni saying here? Uh, he goes on, since the all-perfect persons are inhabitants of the transcendental abode, they do not derive any pleasure there. So if you go into the purport, uh, Prabhupada answers your question right on. Crows and swans <clears throat> are not birds of the same feather because of their different mental attitudes. The fruitive workers or passionate men are compared to the crows whereas the all-perfect saintly persons are compared to the swans. In that purport, or in the, trans, uh, in, the in the verse, in the Sanskrit, it was talking about the hamsas. Uh, a hamsa is a saintly person. A hamsa means like swan-like. Uh, although some people say hamsa is a swan, but the, the hamsa is not a swan. There really is a bird uh, called hamsa. But it's more of a goose, but it's a swan-like bird, and it's like the super bird of birds. Uh, they have been seen flying over Mount Everest at 29, 30,000 feet. Uh, they are uh, the swans of swans. So uh, <clears throat> Prabhupada is comparing crows and, uh, to the fruitive workers and swans to the saintly persons. Why is that? Uh, the crows and swans, being birds uh, uh, of different feather, they have different mental attitudes. The crows are attracted to dirty places. Wherever there's uh, refuse, garbage, uh, maybe not so much in America because people don't see wildlife very much anymore, but in India you can see wherever there's some garbage that's thrown out, you'll see the crows will be there and they'll be pecking through the garbage. Um, Prabhupada is going to go on in, in, in the purport, and he'll explain uh, a little bit more uh, on the difference. Uh, so bear with me, and then we'll discuss it some. 
The crows take pleasure, pleasure in a place where garbage is thrown out. Just as passionate fruited workers take pleasure in wine and women and places for gross sense pleasure. Uh, you see, the, the crows are attracted to the garbage. The swans are attracted to uh, purified things. Uh, the swans are so swan-like or so uh, uh, eloquent in their abilities. It's said that a swan, you can take a, a bowl and put half milk and half water, and the swan can drink the milk out of the bowl and leave the water. So the swans are super, uh, they're super birds. So uh, <clears throat> the swans you're gonna find uh, not in the places that are dirty, like you'll find the crows. Prabhupada goes on, the swans do not take pleasure in the places where the crows are assembled for conferences and meetings. They are instead seen in the atmosphere of natural scenic beauty, where there are trans transparent re reservoirs of water, nicely decorated with stems of lotus flowers in variegated colors of natural beauty. That is the difference between the two classes of birds. Natural, nature has influenced different species of life with different mentalities, and it is not possible to bring them up into the same rank and file. So you can see <laughs> the vast difference in taste between the crows and the swans. The crows are very happy when you show them some garbage, even the, the, whatever you the refuse is, throw it out, and the crows will be there to pick through it. Doesn't matter if it's rotting or degraded, the crows are very happy to have it. <clears throat> you can hear Prabhupada's description of the atmosphere that the swans prefer. Uh, you find them in an atmosphere of natural scenic beauty where there are transparent reservoirs of water, you see. So uh, we can see the different mentality. Uh, this is a swan-like mentality, surrounded by beauty, clean water, beautiful flowers, fragrant flowers. Um, that is the difference between the two classes of birds. Prabhupada also points out nature has influenced these different species of life with different mentalities. It's like when you take your birth, um, as it says in, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says you will receive a particular type of tongue, a particular type of nose, and a particular type of eye. So if you take your birth in the swan-like body, you're attracted to clean water, um, uh, nice, beautiful atmosphere, cleanliness, you know, attractive uh, flowers. And if you take your birth in the body of a crow, well, you're attracted to garbage and things that don't smell so good. So uh, similarly, there are different kinds of literature for different types of men of different mentality. So before I go on, are there any comments or questions at this time? All right. Similarly, Prabhupada says there are different kinds of literature for different types of men and uh, of different mentality. Just as the, the birds, the, the crows and the swans have different mentality, so we can find in human beings. There are, uh, even though they're of the same species, they have tremendously different uh, tastes. And these are based on whether or not they are swan-like or crow-like men. What's the difference between a crow-like and a swan-like man? The difference is one is attracted to the material nature and influenced by the material modes of nature. One is attracted to transcendental subjects. Uh, Krishna, Krishna Kata, praising the devotees, praising the service of devotees, uh, discussing Krishna's pastimes, chanting his names, either in Jalpa or in uh, Kirtan. Uh, 
offering service to Krishna. This is something devotees like to do together. You see, we may do service uh, on our own individual, and also we'll do service together. We'll join together in a force to do service. So the swan-like or the saintly persons are attracted to discussing Krishna Kata, uh, serving together. <clears throat> the uh, crow-like persons, they will notice the faults of others. As it's just like uh, you picture of someone has a big smile and they're missing a front tooth. Well, you'll notice that right away. So the crow-like person, he notices whatever fault you may have right away. Because why? Because he's looking for the fault. They have a tendency, the, the crow-like people have a tendency to look for faults. Why? Because they're in the modes of material nature. Um, mode of passion. Mode of passion means I need to come... Uh, uh, com uh, compete with you. So therefore, that's going to inspire envy. If I need to compete with you for resources, I need to compete with you for a better job or a better uh, life partner or more money or more prestige, then if you are doing well, I become envious. Whereas the saintly person, the swan-like person, he's not looking at the faults. And he's the friend of everyone. When he sees someone who's excelling, even though if they're doing better than himself, he gives praise. He recognizes and he says, oh, look, just see, this is so wonderful. You are doing so well. And if someone tries to say, oh, no, you're doing so well or you're my inspiration, they don't like to hear that. You see, we may want to offer our respects to someone uh, give them some praise. The devotee doesn't like that so much. Uh, he will accept it, pass the glory on to his spiritual master. But you can notice that someone who's in the modes, uh, typically in the modes of uh, passion and or ignorance, if you give them a compliment, they will agree with you. You can say, oh, you did that so nicely. Oh, yes, I've been practicing so hard. So this is someone in the modes. Uh, I'm not saying they're demonic. Please don't misunderstand. I'm saying they're in the modes of material nature. They're affected by the modes, you see. <clears throat> Actually, they were waiting all day for somebody to, to recognize that they're doing so well or they're making such progress. The devotee sim simply wants to offer his service you see, he wants to help everyone else advance in Krishna consciousness. Uh, why? Because he has confidence of his relationship with Guru and Krishna. I am serving. I may not be serving as nicely as you or someone else, but yet I'm serving. I'm serving to my capacity. Uh, and tomorrow I will do better to please Guru and Krishna. And tomorrow you will be better. You will always be better than me. So the devotee has a tendency like that. This is the mirror image of the materialist who simply wants to compete. He wants to show you that so much I have today, so much I will have tomorrow. I will beat you. I will somehow or other uh, win over you, you see. So this is material consciousness. <clears throat> the transcendental consciousness is... I can see what a nice devotee you are. You see. Um, are there any questions before I move on? All right. Silent group tonight. See, this is the difference. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Just uh, unmute yourself and ask a question. If you guys have questions, don't be afraid to speak, please. Yeah, yeah. See, this is the difference between the online and being uh, in, in person together. I can I can stare at you until you ask a question if you're here, but uh, we're not here. So. I have a question. I have All a right. question. To Who is that? Is that Ganga Mantri Prabhu? Hare Bowl. Hare Krishna. Done to what? Question, so please. In, in the purport, 
that there's a there's a short there's a one sentence dividing two paragraphs where Prabhupada says nature has influenced different species of life with different mentalities. It is not possible to bring them up into the same rank and file. Yeah. So uh, now someone could read that and say, well, you're stuck where you're at. And it seems like the whole process of devotional service is to change a person's, you know, mentality from ungodly to godly. So how do we understand that sentence? Um, or is it is he referring to the the crows and the swans specifically? Because it seems like, you know, he's using the analogy of the swans and the crows to represent different mentalities of human beings. So uh, I just thought someone might read that sentence and feel like a person who's like a crow is locked in. Yeah, but, but see, Prabhupada uh, he points out, and you're right. That that's that, like. One uh, that, that's a one sentence paragraph. He says nature has influenced different species of life with different mentalities. So yes, the fish has the mentality that he lives in water and the bird has mentality he lives in the skies and the trees. So there are the species have different mentalities. Why do they have different mentalities? Because they have material bodies and they're very faithful to uh, believing that this body is me. So I'm, uh, I'm a crow and all of, uh, all of my relatives are crows, my parents were crows, my brothers and sisters are crows and all of my friends are crows and we all hang out at the garbage. This is what a good crow does. If you're gonna be a hip crow, you hang out down at the garbage pile, you see. So the other species, the, the swans, Mom and dad are swans. Brother and sister, all of my friends are swans. I associate with swans and we are attracted to the clean uh, reservoirs of water. You see? So can you make a crow into a swan? No. Can you make a swan into a crow? No. However, human beings who behave like uh, crows because they're attracted to the unclean things, they're, untract, they're attracted, and Prabhupada was talking about it, and they're attracted basically to unclean literature and unclean subject matters. Uh, and he's going to go on here in, in the purport and, dis, and get in a little bit more of an in-depth uh, description of that. Uh, whereas uh, the swan-like men, the devotees, they're attracted to things that remind them of Krishna, Krishna Kata. Uh, descriptions of Krishna, his beautiful name, form, his pastimes, his devotees. The devotees, the, the swan-like people, like to engage in praising the devotees. You see, the previous acharyas, uh, the current devotees, and not just devotees that they think are better than you. Huh? No. All devotees, we can see even someone who is just starting out, if they have some zeal to, to serve Guru and Krishna, that's glorious. You see, we, we immediately uh, are attracted to that. The devotee doesn't waste any time wanting any, uh, uh, drawing any attention to himself. Why? Because he's okay with himself, you see. Uh, a lot of people go through life saying, you know, that I, I, I have this problem. I think I need to learn to love myself. We need to get okay with ourselves. Does it mean that I'm going to be so uh, much in love with myself that I'm going to go around telling everybody I'm better than you? No one can compete with me? No. If I get to appreciate myself, I'm simply going to be okay with me. I'm all right. I'm okay. So now, now that I have that understanding about myself as uh, an eternal part and parcel and loving servant of, of Krishna, now that I can see myself like that, let me help someone else get okay with themselves. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I was just thinking in terms of 
on a material level, you can't, as possible, possible says, Prabhupada says, it's not possible to bring them up into the same rank and file right. through any material means because they are conditioned by particular modes of nature. Uh, I guess I, I'm thinking in terms of sort of like a transcendental intervention because speaking for myself, I was still am, but I was very much a crow like person. And by the intervention of, you know, divine grace, Guru, Krishna, Vaishnavas, you know, we have some changing of our position. So it, I, I would read it as being, there's no, and I wouldn't say I, I read it, but a, a, another perspective, not to discount anything you just said, I agree with everything you said. Um, I was just thinking another perspective might be that without the, divine intervention there's no possibility of changing one's uh status in material conditioned life but the the very fact that someone is rescued by you know guru and krishna they can be uplifted into a you know a higher status of life what do you think about that is that make any sense fully agree as a matter of fact that's the only escape Otherwise, we'll always be. Um, we were trained by crows, crow-like people. We become a crow-like person. We're going to raise crow-like people. Uh, and our descendants will be crow-like until we're influenced by uh, and uh, uh, helped by the mercy of Krishna. So it's only by the mercy of Krishna that we're ever going to get out of the current predicament that we're in. You see, the crow thinks he's a crow. The swan thinks he's a swan. So we're all part and parcel, uh, eternal part and parcel of Krishna. We're all spirit soul. How do we get to that realization? You see, it's going to be by the mercy of Krishna, and that will manifest through his devotees. And unless we think, well, I'm so special that I'm going to wait for Krishna to come personally. I, I want God to come personally. I don't want to deal with any any devotee because they're a fallen conditioned soul and I don't believe that God can speak to me through anybody else. So some people feel like that. Uh, that's their right. They can feel like that. But Krishna can use anyone he wants to to contact you. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm not going to give it away, but uh, I, I got a, a really good title for one of the uh, classes that we're going to be having in the next couple of weeks from someone who seems to be a homeless person. He hangs around out, around out in the park where I go to chant my rounds. And I said, I greeted him uh, a couple of days ago. And the words he said, and I'm not going to say them because I don't want to give away the title. I think it's a really neat title. But he said some words. He gave me an opinion, and it sounded like Krishna talking to me. And I, I, I realized, wow. This is a potent thing that you just said. And I, I thanked the guy. I said, thank you so much. And he said, uh, yeah, whatever, you know, you know, kind of like, so K Krishna can talk to me through anybody, you see. So why can't he talk to me through some nice devotee? More than likely, if Krishna is going to talk to us, he will appeal through some devotee. More than likely, it'll be an even greater devotee, like an acharya. So that the Acharya comes and he preaches and he leaves literatures, the types of literature, as Prabhupada is going to talk about in the purport here, the types of literature that separate you from a crow-like person, the types of literature that, that, that will, uh, if you are attracted to, will make you into a swan-like person. So... Does that answer your question? I, I fully agree with what you say. You, you, we depend on uh, the mercy of Krishna, and that's going to manifest through his devotees more than likely. Any other questions before I go on? Thank you. I believe, I believe Elijah had a question. Elijah, you have a question? Go ahead and mute yourself. Yeah, let me hear Hare Krishna, Elijah. Sorry, I was hard to click the button there. Uh, yeah, 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, he's not coming in. Are you yeah. still there? there oh, I there. clicked the button a bunch. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Are, do you have okay. a cold? Uh, yeah, I'm a little under the weather. Uh-oh. Anyway, that's why I'm on the phone. Oh. Mm. I'm so sorry to hear that. Anyway, this is my question. It's kind of a personal question. Uh, okay. sh should I get okay with myself or should I get over myself? <laughs> they kind of go hand in hand. You know, getting okay with yourself is getting over yourself. Uh, if I'm in the, in the modes, if my consciousness is affected by the modes, then I'm always thinking that I need to compete. I need to be equal to or better than everyone around me. I want to be, I want to be considered part of the in crowd. You see, uh, this is the material consciousness, whereas the spiritualist, the devotee, he wants to serve the other devotees. He's not looking. People may say, oh, you're such a nice devotee and this, that, and whatever. Uh, but the devotee, he is thinking, yes, uh, you are the real devotee. Let me just serve you. Uh, so, yeah, they, they go hand in hand. Uh, getting okay with yourself is getting over yourself. Getting over yourself to the point that you don't have to uh, uh, promote yourself to the world or promote your abilities. Now that goes against the grain of material life because if you work in a job, you have to always promote yourself. You know, otherwise, uh, if you don't, then you're not going to get the promotion and so on like that. In spiritual life, it's very different. So. Uh, anyway, are you uh, are you thinking you might be sick with this virus? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. I no? feel like I can recover, but I'm going to stay clear of people from now on. Do you need anything? Do you need to go to the hospital or anything? No, I'm quite all right, but uh, yeah, I'm okay. Um, all right, survivor. Yeah. All right. Well, continue surviving. Let us know if there's anything any of us can do. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you very much. All Thank right. you for answering my question. Hare I, Krishna. Have, I have a quick question. Yes. Yes. So, uh, regarding getting uh, getting okay, so it you know we're taught that we should feel uh, lower than the grass or in the straw in the street. And we're always, you know, encouraged and we're trying to feel humble and trying to feel lower than everyone else. And in a way, you know, for some people, I mean, even for myself, I think that makes me able to be OK with myself. But I think for some, when you tell them that or even, you know, sometimes in my own mind, it could mean that, you know, they don't feel OK with themselves. They want to feel a certain way. So can you elaborate on how the two go together? Yeah, first of all, uh, sometimes people, uh, if you're not spiritually advanced enough, you must understand that uh, feeling lower than the straw in the street, uh, giving respect to all others. Some people will take that as an excuse not to do well. You know, I mean, you can you can say, you know, Oh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, are you chanting nicely? Oh, no, I'm so fallen. They start to use that, I'm so fallen, uh, as an excuse, you see. I've seen that a lot. So uh, don't let yourself be influenced uh, like that and say, well, I can't do this because I'm so fallen, you know. No, consider yourself lower than everyone, lower than the straw on the street. Now, what does that mean? Uh, in the streets in India, you have the animals that are going, you'll have all kinds of people walking, you'll have cars, trucks, buses, and also animals. Sometimes in Mayapur, you'll have uh, somebody herding some cows or water buffaloes or whatever, camels, you know, you'll see whatever. And as wherever animals go, they're going to leave their droppings. <laughs> so... 
you've got animal stool in the in the road, and so people come and they throw straw on that. Uh, the straw kind of kind of it negates the smell a little bit. So when Lord Chaitanya says lower than the straw in the street, what is he talking about? You're under the straw. What's under the straw? The stool from the animals. So in other words, what he's saying is I'm, I'm not puffing myself up to think that I'm something special. I'm thinking of myself uh, lower than you, uh, able, quick and, and ready to give uh, all respect to everyone. Now, what if someone, if you've been a devotee for a long time and someone else has been a devotee only a short time, how can we give respect to them? Well, according to how long uh, they've been a devotee and how nicely they're serving, I should be much better devotee than they are because I've been a devotee for a long time. You see what I mean? If your mind is trained to see the benefit and the, the uh, glories of everyone around you, to recognize and, and give praise to others and offer respect to everyone, you start looking for the clean things about people, you see? And then we're not attracted. We're not looking so much for uh, any faults that they may have. If they have a fault, then I may try to help them somehow. But in the material world, if I see some fault in someone, I simply want to degrade them. That gives me an advantage to, to uh, compete with them. So uh, does that make any sense? Uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Also, you know, it's, it's like when you're in that state, you know, you should always still try your best at whatever you do. But while yeah. feeling, you know, humble, you doesn't, it doesn't mean you don't try your best. And it actually, I think it empowers me to try try harder because my yeah. ego is not getting in the way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Don't, uh, don't take it as an excuse. No, oh, gee whiz, I'm falling. I'm lower than straw in the street, so I, I don't even try. No, I'm lower than straw in the street, and I'm going to try my best. What is my best? I don't know. I'm a work in progress. My best... Uh, uh, yesterday was one thing. My best today is that plus because I'm trying hard. Not only that, but Krishna will empower me as I go along to serve him nicely. You see, as my sincerity grows, then Krishna will empower us. If I ever start thinking, aha, now I've made so much advancement and I start getting a little puffed up at my advancement, then, uh, I've lost my empowerment. You see, why is Krishna going to continue to power me? Empower me if I'm puffed up. You know, there's that story. Uh, uh, I can't remember the names. Anyway, there was Guru, and he had uh, he had one disciple who was a mouse, and the mouse came to him and said, "Oh, Guruji, the cat is chasing me." And so I need, I need you to make me a dog so that I can defend against the cat. And so, all right, you're a dog. And then a few days later, the, the dog disciple that used to be a mouse, he came to the guru and he said, guru, oh, I'm so scared because uh, now I'm a dog. I'm not afraid of the cat, but the tiger is, 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 chase, is chasing. So make me a big, powerful tiger. So the guru says, oh, yes, okay, you're a tiger. And so the, the uh, disciple is turned into a tiger. And then he looks at the guru and says, now that I'm a tiger, I have a tiger's appetite. And I look at you and I think I will eat you. And so the guru says, then again, a mouse. In other words, you're unempowered. You know, so again, a mouse. So if we become envious like that, if we become uh, under the spell of the modes, the guru has the right to say, ah, then again, a mouse. I return you back to the situation that I found you in. You see? So uh, this isn't, uh, spiritual life is not a competition. It's a competition between you and you. 
you and your mind. See, developing your ability. You in surrender. See, but you're not competing with anyone else. Oh, uh, you may say, well, but I know some devotees and they seem competitive. All right. This ISKCON is like a hospital. And you have uh, in a hospital, you have so many people that are sick. People are sick, they go to the hospital. Of people who go to the hospital, some of them have been there for a long time and they're almost well. They're going to be discharged very soon. But you also have people who have been there for a while and they're having some relapse, you see, but they're, they're struggling to get over it. So it's not that uh, if I see a devotee and I see some, some of these qualities in someone who should be, I think that they shouldn't have those qualities, give them credit that they're still in the hospital. They're still taking their medicine. They're still uh, somehow or other, they're, uh, doing their best and they're appealing to the mercy of Krishna and therefore they will be successful. Okay? Does that answer your question? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Ganga Mantri and Dr. Chris, we're getting good questions here. So, uh, anybody else before we move on? Hare Krishna Prabhu, I have a question. Yes. Ah, Jagdish. Uh, hurry, hurry. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, hey, Jagdish. So, um, so anyone who is you um, who is an expert in Skype, um, I would like to ask. You know, how do you um, make your uh, video the main video, and like uh, like click on click on your video and make it uh, a real feed like the main window you mean I like found, i found that you can drag one window like a different character off of the screen and drag a new person yeah. into the center of the screen if you're on your phone hmm. i'm not sure if it's desktop yeah, yeah. computers yeah i did that yes you can do that um, but how do you how do we click only jivanand prabhu and uh, enlarge him you have to oh maybe drag the other person out of the screen because I had a uh, two if it's if that's the case. Yeah. Um, and there's also um, there's a little box with an arrow pointing down. You're going to see grid view, speaker view, window, and float. If you have it on speaker view, essentially the the screen is going to change to the person that's speaking automatically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Fantastic. That's what I wanted to know. Um, Webex does the same. I'm going to do that. Um, so Girish Prabhu was getting only my video. So Girish Prabhu, just change it to speaker view. Okay. You got it, right? Grid view, speaker view. So we want speaker view, right? That is yes. correct. That way it'll automatically switch to the person that's speaking. Skype is able to, you know, through the sound of the voice is able to switch that camera. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, I did a program uh, Wednesday night with the devotees from San Antonio, and they, they like Zoom. And uh, Zoom is good, too. You know, yeah. it, it might even be better. So maybe one of these days uh, we'll get Zoom. I think the Zoom might be better. But this works, so... Uh, Anyway, you guys are the smart ones. You figure out which is which is better, uh, and let me know. It worked, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. God uh, this side, Prabhu. Hey, Gorganadhar, Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. It wow. it worked great, Prabhu. Now it's it's fine now, Prabhu. It's fine. Ah. Thank you, thank you, Prabhu. Excellent. Wonderful. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hi, is that Rasa Kaley? Yes, yes. I had a question about um, the topic that uh, about the um, pros in the swan and like yeah. finding faults. Yeah, so yeah. I was wondering, like, what's the proper balance between being humble and at the same time um, having respect for ourselves, but at the same time being able to serve others in the in the mood of humility? 
Say that again. What's the balance between being humble and being able to serve others? No, like being humble and serving others. And then the other side is um, like at the same time, like not thinking of ourselves as like low in the sense of like self-esteem. Yeah, yeah. Low self-esteem is uh, is material consciousness. Low self-esteem means I'm thinking that I can't compete with you. You're better. You're a better baseball player than I, or you're a better cook, and I want to be better than you. I'm, I I envy you because you're a better cook. Cook. Uh, there can be competition if we're still trying to serve Krishna together. For instance, you may have in this in the spiritual world the the uh, gopis, the devotees there, they compete with one another to see who can serve Krishna nicely. The difference is that. They don't have the material uh, consciousness that I need to bring you down in order for me to go up. You see, I see how nicely you're serving Krishna. So therefore, I want to try hard to uh, serve Krishna, too. Does that make any sense? So I'm seeing the, the, the good in everyone. And I see that I the areas where I need to improve. And Krishna will allow me to uh, improve. Krishna will empower me to improve. Uh, if I wanted to, to serve Krishna better, why would he not give me the empowerment to do so? You see? So, uh, does that answer your question, or did I did I not? Yeah, yes, bro. That was great, bro. Thank you. Nice to hear your voice, Russ Kaley. Thank you. Thank you. Or is that Nati Hari Priya? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Priya. <laughs> Are you still naughty? Nah. No? I'll bet you are. You're so naughty, you remind me of Krishna. <laughs> no, I'm not naughty. <laughs> I'm listening to your class. Uh, all right, Krishna. I, I'm, 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 I'm missing, missing you, you class. Yeah? Well, I'm missing you, too. As soon as this virus is over, I'll be on the road, and I'll come and see everybody. Thank you. Thank well, you. On the way. All right. Uh, Prabhu. Says, huh? So I have um, on the same lines what um, Radhika asked. Um, so when, uh, you know, I, I don't think, you know, this is my opinion and uh, please tell me if I'm correct. When it comes to um, service, when it comes to humility, there is really no esteem. There is no, we cannot even say we need to maintain any balance because there is really no esteem. We has to be, we have to be, as I've learned from Vaishnavas, we have to be a servant of servant of a servant. So there is really no esteem. Esteem means it's like relative to someone else. There is no relativity there at all. So I would think, you know, the esteem word should even, should not even come, self-esteem. Is that right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I fully agree. Uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, to the degree that I'm worried about my self-esteem, I'm on the material platform. When you introduce the ingredient of love, that changes everything. If I'm trying to do something uh, that's right, it's an offering of love, then to the degree that I love that person, it will never be perfect. You see? When yes, you, that is correct. Uh, you know, the husband may do something that totally pleases the wife. And she says, oh, that is so wonderful. And the husband is thinking, but I could have done better. You see, out of love, to the degree that you love the one you're offering your service to, uh, to that degree, you'll never be able to be satisfied from your end. The other person may say, oh, no, this is, that was wonderful. That was very good. And you may think, well, I'm so happy that, that you're happy. I'm happy that you're satisfied. However, I know uh, I can do better, and next time I will do better. Because love yeah, gives me the, the intense desire to please my beloved. 
So if we take away the object or, or the uh, element of love, then it's just competition. It's me against you. If I don't exactly. love Exactly. Yeah. You see? Now, so, if we both love the same person in the spiritual uh, consciousness, then we're going to help each other serve better and better. Yeah, absolutely, Prabhu. When, when we get into relations and if we think everyone's uh, my relative, everyone's like my brother and sister or uh, Mataji and um, fathers and mothers, they, uh, you know, there will definitely be love, as you mentioned. And instead of, instead of the self-esteem thing, only they will get pain or will get joy. There's only two things with the relationship. Either we get pain or joy. There's really no yeah. self-esteem or anything. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Prabhupada goes on, he says, mostly the market literatures which attract men of the crow's categories are literatures containing refused remnants of sensuous topics. We all know that. We know that to be true. They are generally known as mundane talks in relation with the gross body and the subtle mind. They are full of subject matter described in decorative language, full of mundane smiles and metaphorical arrangements. Yet, with all that, they do not glorify the Lord. Such poetry and prose in any subject matter is considered decoration of a dead body. So, <laughs> Prabhupada has this wonderful uh, poetic way of speaking. He's speaking poetic and he's criticizing the mundane poetry. You know, mundane poetry is talking about some sensuous this or sensuous that, uh, some feeling of desire that I have like that. Uh, whereas the, uh, the devotee of Krishna, he is also uh, <clears throat> inspired to poetry, but his poetry glorifies Krishna and Krishna's devotees. You see? So it's not that there is no, um, no chance of poetry for the devotee, that we neglect poetry. We purify poetry by making it about Krishna and his devotees. Okay? Spiritually advanced men <clears throat> who are compared to the swans do not take pleasure in such dread literatures which are the sources of pleasure for men who are spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. Why? They're attracted to things that have to do with the senses. Uh, they're attracted to things that have uh, to do with uh, sensual pleasure, sensual attraction, <clears throat> or lamenting because they wanted sensual pleasure and they didn't. The guy wanted the girl, the girl went with another guy. So now in his poetic writing, he's lamenting that this is my story of heartbreak and I should win an Academy Award for it or, or some book award or, or like that. These things Prabhupada points out have nothing to do with glorifying the, the Supreme Lord, so therefore they cannot be uh, satisfy, uh, satisfying to the soul. They may satisfy our senses temporarily, but they're not satisfying to the soul. Uh, these literatures are in the mode of passion and ignorance and they're distributed under different labels, but they can hardly help the spiritual urge of the human being. And thus, the swan-like, spiritually advanced men, men have nothing to do with them. There's no attraction, you see? It's just like the swans are not attracted to the garbage. Such spiritually advanced men are also known, uh, are also manasa, because they always keep up the standard of transcendental voluntary service to the Lord on the spiritual plane. <clears throat> this completely forbids fruitive activities for gross bodily sense satisfaction or subtle speculation of the uh, of material egotistic mind. So we see that many times 
Uh, a lot of times we see people that the, the more education they get, uh, they want to, they, they feel like, now I have so many letters after my name, that allows me to speculate. And my speculation is better than your speculation because you didn't get the mundane education that I get, you see. Uh, whether it's mundane or spiritual in your education, um, we don't speculate. You see, devotees don't speculate. We accept as fact <clears throat> guru, sadhu, and shastra. The words of our spiritual master, the words of our shiksha gurus and the assembled devotees, and shastra. So, uh, and that's enough to make us happy. Why? Because we're not affected by the modes. If we're in the mo if I get in the mode of passion, then I want to speculate, and I want you to recognize my speculation as being uh, <clears throat> factual <coughs> or important. So, social literary men, scientists, mundane poets, theoretical philosophers, and politicians who are completely absorbed in the material advancement of sense pleasure are all dolls of the material energy. I'm going to pause here and say, and, and, and does anyone know what Prabhupada is saying here? They're dolls of the material energy. Anyone want to offer a, an opinion? Why is Prabhupada calling these people dolls of the material energy? Because they're puppets on strings. There you go. Exactly. The material energy is playing with them. You see, they maybe think that they have, have reached a position where they have some control. I'm smarter than you, or I'm more famous than you, or I'm more wealthy than you. So I have some control uh, over my world that you don't have. When the fact is, you're just a dancing puppet. You see, you're the doll of the material energy. Material energy is playing with you like a toy doll. You're being manipulated. You're being controlled. <coughs> Prabhupada says, he goes on, they take pleasure in a place where rejected subject matters are thrown. According to Swami Sridhar, this is the pleasure of the prostitute hunters. Prabhupada doesn't pull any punches, does he? <laughs> Let me read that again. According to Swami Sridhar, this is the pleasure of the prostitute hunters. Uh, this, you know, most of the mundane uh, subject matter uh, has to do with some type of sex life, either subtle or gross. You see, there's some sex life in there, some subtle sex life or whatever. And Prabhupada refers to the people who are attracted to this type of literature as uh, prostitute hunters, uh, the mentality of prostitute hunters, people that are looking for uh, sensual gratification. Prabhupada closes by saying, but literatures which describe the glories of the Lord are enjoyed by the Parmahamsas who have grasped the essence of human activities. So, you could give a class just on this sentence here. These literatures that describe the glories of the Lord are enjoyed by Parmahamsas, pure devotees, great souls. This is the swan-like men take pleasure in literature which describe the glories of the Lord. Uh, the crow-like men, they don't want to hear it. Keep it to yourself, <laughs> you know. Now, uh, many of you, I'm sure, I know I've had this experience, you get into a crowd of people, and you may start talking about spiritual uh, subject matter, and someone maybe very soon will say, it's getting pretty deep, you know, that's a little deep, let's, let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys, do you think they're going to win the, uh, the Super Bowl, do you think the Yankees are going to win the World Series again, or, or whoever. If I didn't mention your team, please forgive me. Don't, don't hold that against me. <laughs> I don't know whose team is what. I don't care. 
Oh, uh, because this, while we're on that subject, that sports life is another uh, form of just gratification. Uh, one-upsmanship. I want to be uh, the promoter of the better team because I'm, if I'm a, uh, it, it's just like, it used to be like that, um, um, well, as far back as I can remember, like in, in the in the rock and roll days. I don't know if they still have rock and roll, do they? they I think it was replaced by hip hop or something. But there used to be rock and roll. And I wanted to show that I was a good rock and roll man. So I would buy a T-shirt that would say Led Zeppelin. So people, when they saw me, they would think, oh, he's a Led Zeppelin man. Wow, he is really cool. You know, because I think Led Zeppelin is cool. If you see me wearing their T-shirt or Pink Floyd or whoever, I want to identify with that group because it makes me feel okay with me, you see? And I'm thinking, uh, and, and probably that came from them seeing someone else with a Led Zeppelin T-shirt. And they thought, wow, what a cool T-shirt. He must be a really cool guy. I'll bet everybody likes him. I'll bet everybody's impressed, like I am, with this guy's uh, quaff, the way he wears his hair, the way that the way he's wearing that T-shirt, whatever, um, and I, that identifies him with a particular group. So this is uh, mental material nonsense. These are the crows. The crows are like that. Uh, but you may get around some uh, materialist. And immediately they're checking you out to see, oh, I wonder where he got that jacket or those shoes or whatever. The materialist, uh, they're so much into being their bodies that they identify with the coverings that they put on their bodies, you see. So um, the Paramahamsas, on the other hand, they're not their bodies. They're not so much concerned. They want to wear a nice, nice cloth. They're typically they're going to wear natural clo uh, cloth, good cloth. They're going to wear cloth that maybe appeals uh, to other people uh, in in a way that people will see. Oh, you seem clean. Well, you're dressed uh, in that color. You must be a, a householder. I, I would say that you're married, or you're dressed in that color. You must be in the renounced order. You see, and not become envious. You know, well, I think you're wearing some nice, uh, expensive cotton. I think I'll be envious. The devotees are not like that, you see. Um, so we're not competing with each other. Uh, the Parmahas Parmahamsas have grasped the essence of human activities, Prabhupada says. Human activities are performing activities, thinking thoughts, and speaking words that help us and the people around us think of Krishna. And thoughts, words, and actions that promote us towards being better devotees. And therefore, if you are a better devotee, you can influence others to become uh, better devotees. We don't, in, on, in any circumstances, want to push people down. That is complete material hogwash. We don't see that in the community of devotees. Uh, however, from time to time, there may be someone who's having a bit of a material relapse. Uh, or maybe they haven't uh, overcome perfectly uh, the ability to act as a Paramahamsa or a swan-like person. Give them your mercy. They, you find someone like that, they need more of your love and more of your mercy. So, uh, are there any questions or comments? Hi, Krishna Sir. This is Freddie from El Paso. Hey, Bhakti Freddie. Namo Namaha. Hare Krishna. There's a well, swan-like uh, swan man right there. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to... Uh, sort of uh, try to put together a defense for some of the literature that might fit the uh, crow category. 
you know, because um, I know before I came to the Krishna conscious literature, before I came to Srimad Bhagavatam, I was very uh, enthusiastic about, let's say, literature that won a Nobel Prize, like a hundred years of solitude or different poets, but, you know, that I learned from the university. But I'm just having a hard time thinking about like how, like, I guess my taste for that kind of literature has changed since I started the Krishna conscious journey. Um, because I used to think it was very beautiful and like it would make you feel more alive. But uh, since I started, you know, into this, uh, more into the Shaman Bhagavatam, I have a hard time kind of like taking in the other literature. But um, but just to try to make a case for them, you know, w what would you say about literature that um, makes this experience more like uh, beautiful or... Um, that is just shows genius level, you know, but, um, you know, in a way you have to read in between the lines to get the, the feeling that there is a God working behind uh, all this creation and things like that. Um, you know, it's, I guess it's kind of difficult to say, but um, um, how do you, does all literature, no matter how great it is, uh, if it doesn't mention the Lord, like very, very clearly, um, you know, what, what category does it fit in? Is there like any gray line in between there? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, let me see if I understand what you're saying. Um, are you talking about literatures that are uh, materially entertaining? Well, sir, um, I have read uh, some literature that I guess you could say is trash, you know, but then there's also some other literature that, you know, they won a Nobel Prize and it's like really, really good. Um, but the only problem is that it doesn't like to, to think about God, you'd probably have to read in between the lines and see that there is like, uh, you know, it's showing you something. Um, like, for example, um, I think Carl Sagan, who is like, a, I guess he's kind of like considered like an atheist or he yeah. talks about the universe. And uh, but he has a really nice quote. He says, if you want to make apple pie, first, you need a universe. And uh, and that kind of statement is uh, is pretty striking and is very interesting and gets one to think a little bit. Um, but I can see how it's, uh, you know, it doesn't glorify the Lord directly, but it's uh, it's kind of like uh, more of the impersonal Brahmin, which would be still kind of a quality of the Lord, but it's not all the way. Uh, where would you put that literature? Uh, still in the sight of the crows or kind of in between a crow and the swan? Well, it's still crow-like in that he doesn't really believe. He believes that there is a universe. He doesn't really want to admit that there's some intelligent design by some intelligent entity, intelligent creator. So he's talking uh, out of nescience. He's going to be a scientist, but he's talking about nescience, no science. There is no intelligence there. Uh, now, he may say, how dare you? I'm, a, I'm an educated man. I have my PhD and blah, blah, blah. All right, so you have a, a, you're, you're an educated and you're a crow PhD. So, very good. You studied very hard and you learned a whole lot about uh, the cosmic manifestation. Give it a few years and that's all going to change because that's what we've seen uh, in my life anyway. The scientists keep changing the origin of the universe or the destiny of the universe or the origin of species. They keep changing all that. So they seem like a bunch of uh, foolish people to me. Now, here's what they can do. If you have some spiritual realization, you may see some uh, mundane something, and there may be something in it that reminds you of Krishna, or it reminds you of some um, uh, aspect of Krishna consciousness, or it because you're seeing it through the eyes of the lens of a devotee, you can you may recognize some uh, human suffering, and it helps you point out to other people how people are suffering. You see what I mean? 
you may not be having a life where you're suffering, but then you see some something and it reminds you of how people are suffering. And so then, because sometimes the devotee is a little bit isolated, you see, uh, when you see mundane literature or books, movies, whatever, through the eyes of the devotee, you don't see it through the eyes of the crows, okay? I'm not saying that you should spend a lot of time uh, with this mundane literature. I'm not saying that. But I do remember the story, I think it was Upendra that was saying that he was on uh, an airplane trip with Srila Prabhupada. And there was a Charlie Chaplin movie playing. And so Prabhupada was... was uh, uh, Upendra was trying to not wear, watch the movie because it was Maya. He was not watching. And then he heard Prabhupada laughing, and he looked. Prabhupada was watching Charlie Chaplin. And Prabhupada exclaimed, he said, this is Krishna. I am the ability in man. So watching Charlie Chaplin, who was so talented, he had such ability to... Uh, 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 to uh, uh, entertain people. Prabhupada saw that. That reminded him of Krishna. I am the ability in man. So Prabhupada could see, just see how this man can entertain. And this is Krishna. You see? So he saw Krishna even in that. Now, we may not be at that level to where we can see, recognize Krishna in some sort of a, a mundane uh, literature or movie, or play, or whatever, you see? Uh, or we may be the way we can recognize some. So you may read these, these things with your uh, purified knowledge, spiritual knowledge that you've uh, uh, attained now, and you may be able to read between the lines and read something in there that reminds you of Krishna. So... The more advanced we become in Krishna consciousness, the more things that are going to remind you of Krishna. That doesn't mean that we delve into just mundane subject matter. If you're a swan-like man, you are attracted to the swan-like literatures. Uh, if you're in love with Krishna, you'll seek out your beloved. You'll find places that discuss his uh, glories, his pastimes his attributes, and his devotees. So uh, we, we find ourselves more attracted to the swan-like things. And if we do see the mundane, if we're exposed to the mundane things, we simply see it. It'll remind us in some, some way of uh, Krishna and the suffering of others. So does that make any sense? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Um, ever since I started this uh, Krishna conscious journey, uh, my taste for art or literature or, you know, just the information that I put in my mind, I always kind of have this feeling, well, what does this have to do with Krishna? You know, and so some things that I really enjoyed before in the past, uh, now I don't understand why I enjoyed them just because I would prefer to be in a conversation about Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita. And so I thank you very much for clarifying that. Because I do, uh, if I do see something that's mundane, I'm always kind of thinking, oh, I want to seek out, like, is this person going to tell me a little bit about Krishna or of God? Or is there anything in there? Um, and if I don't see it, then uh, then I just try to get back to my Shamad Bhagavatam. Thank yeah. you, sir. It is my pleasure. Anybody else? Yeah, I'd like to add on to what he just asked because I thought it was a really good question. But I'm going to use music as my example because I'm, you know, I'm a musician and I've been into music my whole life. So I can definitely understand that, you know, some music is very mundane and other, you know, you know, some people are really into violent music and music that is not uh, spiritually conscious. But, you know, I, I was also really into and still been into for uh, my whole life into uh, the great composers like, uh, just to give an example, Vivaldi, who was a priest, and uh, Bach, who was uh, writing devotional music, even though it doesn't directly glorify with language Krishna, 
it was written in a sense out of bhakti because both those composers were writing music um, for the church or for God. So just I wanted to ask your opinion on that real quick, on the classical composers. Different people are going to make different uh, offerings to God. Uh, are they all going to be on the level of Bhakti Vinod Thakur? No. Bhakti Vinod, Bhakti Vinod Thakur was uh, tasting the mellows of Krishna Prema. So he could write poetry to Krishna, praising uh, Krishna and sharing that taste that he had, you see. So other people, they're sharing what taste they have. And that's glorious too, you see. They may not be on the level of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, but still, for where they are, they're doing a very nice service. You see what I mean? They're expressing their feeling of uh, gratitude to God, uh, whatever affection they're feeling for God, they're able to put it together into some uh, some music. And that's very good. <coughs> Thank you, Gurudev. But, you know, uh, uh, if you're in, in music and you can use it to serve Krishna, then it's it's really it's it's a really wonderful situation whatever talent god given talent that you have if you can use that in service of guru and krishna it's wonderful it's glorious but it doesn't mean that if you're uh, an expert musician that you have to use your music your music for krishna it doesn't mean you have to but you may be uh, moved to do that. You see what I mean? If yes. you're a poet, you may be moved to write poetry for Krishna. Uh, a very good friend of mine, a very great devotee of Krishna, a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, who is no longer with us, uh, His Holiness Tamal Krishna Maharaj, uh, he was telling me the story that um, in the Haight Ashbury days in the late 60s, he was a very, uh, he was in the Haight-Ashbury district of San Francisco, and he was a very renowned flautist. He played uh, jazz flute. He played with the hip jazz bands of uh, San Francisco. He was very well known and very well established. And so when he became a devotee, he put his flute away and never played again. And so I said, why? And he said, you can't play the flute and chant at the same time. So I, I felt like it was useless. So he just put it away. So <laughs> uh, that was his interpretation. I think my, my calling is to chant rather than to play the flute. That was, that was the way he saw it. You see what I mean? Others may say, no, I can play the flute, flute for Krishna while someone else is chanting. That's fine. So my point is that just because you're expert at one thing doesn't mean you have to give it for, uh, do it for Krishna. You see? There are things that we want to do for Krishna, and there are things that we know Krishna wants us to do for him. You see the difference? Uh, yeah, I... there are things we want to do for Krishna. That's very, very sweet. But then there are things we know Krishna wants us to do for him. Like, uh, if I invite you over to my house, and I I really like garunga potatoes, and I make really great garunga potatoes, and I like them a lot, so I want to make my garunga potatoes for you. I may not know that you don't like potatoes. You see what I mean? But I want to do this for you out of love and affection. But if my love and affection were even deeper, I may find out what it is that you prefer. You see? Yeah, absolutely. So just to, like, like in a, just to give an example of that for, for a, a question purpose would be, you know, Guru Dave tells you chant Hare Krishna. So 
that would be something, you know, Gurudev being the representative of Krishna, that would be something Krishna wants. However, wanting to write music for Krishna or, you know, apply a certain occupation, whether it be music or art or whatever it be, would be something you want to do for Krishna. Well, now you've crossed into a different subject. Now you're inquiring uh, to the guru, uh, how can I serve you? And the guru, if he knows you well, he's going to engage you according to your propensities. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So by you inquiring, how can I, what should I do? What should my service be? That means you've let go of what I want to do for Krishna. Now I want to know, what should I do for Krishna? The guru, knowing your heart, will do his best to engage you according to your propensity. In other words, he's not going to say, well, you know, I think you've, uh, you're, you're a very good musician. Uh, I think you should become a lumberjack. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. No, the guru knows your heart. He'll, he'll say, oh, I know your heart. I know. So in other words, you're offering your services to Krishna. And so I would like to see Krishna say, uh, serve by hearing your beautiful guitar music. You see? That's a different situation. Thank you, Guru Dave. Does that make any sense? Absolutely. Sometimes... Uh, when people ask me, what should I do to serve Krishna? The first question I ask them is, what do you want to do? <laughs> what do you want? Prabhupada would do the same thing. Yes. Yes. How should I serve? What is it that you feel you want to do? It doesn't mean that just because you say, I want to do this or that, that the guru is going to say, okay, then go do that. But you reveal your mind like that, you see. Thank you. What else? Anybody else? Hare Krishna. Uh, I have I had something to uh, add to the point where we're talking about people who are educated in the material world. It's almost like a trap because it encases their mind and they are... They're not allowed, it's, so a lot of them are not allowed to look beyond what they were taught. And anything beyond what they were taught is, is like foreign to them or does not exist. And then uh, another thing about the guy who's saying, uh, you know, he's got a love for Krishna now. It's like, it's because, you know, there's different modes of different planes. You know, you have the material plane, you have the emotional plane, the mental plane, and the spiritual plane. And once you've reached your taste for the spiritual playing, you don't want any of the lower ones because you've already you've you reached the highest taste. Yes, so that's what I want. Yeah, uh, things that may be very attractive. Uh, I remember I grew up in a very poor surrounding, poor family, um, bad part of Chicago. I always wanted money. I thought, you know, one of these days I'm going to get out of this dumpy place and out of this uh, crime-ridden neighborhood, and I'm going to, I'm going to have money. I'm going to be something. And uh, so, by the grace of Krishna, somehow or other, I became very well off, very young, very young in life, and uh, uh, was actually very more than comfortable. <clears throat> and then when I met the devotees. And I became uh, a little bit uh, at, at, attracted to Krishna consciousness. I saw what I had is, is uh, like uh, pieces of broken glass. I thought, well, this is a bunch. This is a whole lot of endeavor for nothing. You see, this is all useless. Um, but that was in the mode of passion. I wanted to renounce in the mode of passion. And I talked with some of the sannyasis, and they said, why don't you offer this ability to make money to Krishna? Krishna has given you this uh, empowerment. Krishna says, I am the ability in man. So this ability to make money is a manifestation of Krishna. 
So why don't you use this to serve Krishna? You know, open a temple, start preaching, do like that. And so I took their advice and I was, uh, I was, as they say, I lived happily ever after. It was very nice. So um, after some time I got into management and I got out of business. So for a long time, I was just managing in ISKCON. And then as my family started to grow more, I needed more money. I didn't want to take from the temple. I went back into business and Krishna made me uh, more successful than ever before. And then I could me I could use not only take care of my family, but I could use even more Lakshmi in service of Krishna. And so, uh, so if we can see, yes, uh, I have some ability, and I want to use this in service of Guru and Krishna. Oh, then it's glorious. It's glorious. You see, if you can't use it. Uh, to serve uh, Guru and Krishna, then it's a, a waste of your time. It's a distraction on the spiritual platform. Does that make any sense? Yes, thank you. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Prabhu, um, this is Jagdish. Um, Hare Krishna Jagdish. Hare Krishna. So in life, like um, a 18 year old or a 20 year old wouldn't know what they're going after unless they go work in some place, toil and, you know, bend the mind, um, get uh, exhausted of all the material energies, um, use their intelligence to go around and around um, by learning a lot. Um, and finally, at the age of 40 or probably 45, maybe later on, they realize they're, they're, they were only running around. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, um, it's an experience that I think some, some of us has to go through. Um, some of us probably from previous birth, we could have known, okay, all this is just toiling. Um, see, Prabhu, what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes we're just uh, toiling, working hard, and we're uh, we find ourselves. It's like you ever see a dog chasing his tail. Yeah. You know, uh, you're you're struggling to get ahead and uh, trying to outdo someone else, and you're trying and trying and trying, and it's just going around and around in circles. When you find that, you know, my life has more meaning than just uh, working, just hard work. If, if by working hard, I can serve Guru and Krishna, then the hard work is very sweet. But if it's just hard work for money, then that's just foolishness. Yeah. You see, does that make any sense? Did that answer your yes, question? Yes, bro. I'm just reading some. My, my phone has been going off. I'm checking my, my messages. All right. Any other questions? Comments? Mother Rangavati, how are you feeling? Huh? You have to unmute. Can I unmute you? I think you did it there. Now you put it back on. Babananda, un just unmute. Click on the little microphone. Govinda Madhava, can I un unmute him? Yeah. 
Um, no, they have to unmute themselves. Oh. Ah, who did it? Ah, Hare Krishna. Hey, yeah. Hare. Very nice to, very nice, Jivananda Prabhu, that you are back in our front room again. Yeah. <laughs> in the virtually. We've, we've got Mother Rungavati and Bhakti Freddy. And both of them uh, are personal servants, the Lord Jagannath. Yeah. Lord Jagannath manifests in Arkadelphia, Arkansas, and in El Paso. So oh. we have both of those wonderful servants joining us. So, how are you feeling, Mother Rungavati? You were a little sick. Are you feeling better? It's up and down because of my my allergies. So. Uh. Yeah, I think it's just allergies. Just allergies. Yeah, it's, I've got a lot of catar, um, mucus. So, yeah. Yeah, so I think it's allergies. So, um, up and down. Hmm. Well, living with Bob and Anna is enough to put you under weather, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> I only pick on people that I love. That's all right. That makes I me. Know. That makes me clear. Where's Rada Sundari? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, he left. <laughs> I just saw the little thing that came up. Here. Rada Sundari left the group. She's afraid. I'm no, right. I'm right here. No, no, she's right here. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Are you gonna pick on me? Am I what? Are you gonna pick on me? I will, but when you're not present. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I can't see you. Rada Sundry, lean into the camera. She's right there. Right I'm next right to here. Me. I can't Can you see you. Linda? No, no. Move it over a little further. Move over toward closer to your house. There you are. I can see you. Hare Krishna. There is a Rana Sundari. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm glad everyone is feeling well and nobody except for poor uh, Elijah. No one seems to be feeling really. Uh, you people in Tucson, keep an eye on uh, Elijah and see if he needs anything. And... Uh, I need Does a big hug. Have any questions or comments? I think Elijah said he needs a hug. Oh, oh, that reminds me. Let's have some meditational hugs. All right. Close your eyes and meditate on a big group hug. Yeah. <laughs> a big group cinnamon hug, cinnamon roll. There you go. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> This isn't as good as being together a personal cinnamon roll, but uh, <laughs> it works for now. <laughs> After we're talking about this, uh, does anybody uh, have any comments about the subject matter? Uh, the crows, the swan-like? The, it seems like the crow mentality is taking over in the world, though, cut. Or maybe it already has taken over. Does anybody disagree with that? I think the crow-like mentality dominates this planet right now. I think we need a revolution, right? Yeah. Do you agree? Hell yeah. Thursday, yeah. Thursday night, same time, same station, <laughs> we're going to talk about the revolution. <laughs> the revolution. It's going to talk about the revolution. So we're going to revolt. We're going to get together and we're going to revolt. So I haven't come up with the exact title yet, but it'll be something about the revolution. Join the revolution. How about that? Jack. Join in the revolution. That's the title for Thursday. Join in, join, join the revolution. Or join, in the revolution. join in the revolution. Okay. If you could that revolution down with crows. Yeah. <laughs> down with crows. Oh, because become a swan. 
How to become a swan. So, uh, yeah. I already know the verse. It talks about the revolt that we're going to lead against the crows. So <laughs> yeah. We're going to become more swan-like. We're going to overthrow the crows. There we okay. go. We're either going to kick them out of the nest or they're going to convert. So <laughs> and, and that's Thursday night. That's 530 uh, Arizona time. Right? Yes. Okay. So same time for all your various time zones. Same time. Same time and possibly same station. We Unless we switch it up to Zoom. I don't know. We might. Yeah. Yeah. So the, news, uh, the news has been reporting on Zoom that a lot of people are hacking into it and uh -huh. putting up a lot of, of visual stuff and commentary that is very inappropriate. And so schools have been asked not even to use Zoom. Mm. Wow, the, crow, the crows are hacking in Zoom, huh? That's right, yeah, yeah. that's right, that's right. Yeah. So we need a place for the swans to be safe. So, <laughs> all right, so... I'll leave it up to you guys. You're the geniuses. You figure that out. Whether we use Zoom or I don't care if we Skype or Zoom, as long as we get to do this. So. Absolutely. And well, this seems to be working. Together. This be working, and we're getting an idea of how to use it. Otherwise, yeah. we wouldn't have any idea with Zoom when where even to find it. Yeah. Well, you're yeah. very fortunate because you've got Bob and under there, and he can figure out just about anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <he's laughing. laughs> so, Prabhu, uh, I think it would be worth to try Zoom or uh, WebEx um, because the video quality and uh, audio quality uh, might be really good in those. Um, Skype, the the video kind of is shaky uh, wow. and turns out. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's true. What do you mean it's shaky? <laughs> <laughs> right now it's shaking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so shaky in the sense um the resolution um the change in the in the actions it does not it's not immediate yes the, um, the frames the frames take some time to move yeah there's very the frames per second yeah they're not they're not very good yeah yeah i noticed uh uh, the, the zoom did was the, the frames per second was probably a little faster. Absolutely. Yeah. So the reason reason why I'm saying is I have one gig internet and uh, I'm I'm supposed to get good uh, video uh, and if I'm not then you know it's something to do with uh, Skype. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you're coming in pretty clear, Jagdish Prabhu. So for the most part. Yeah, you're looking very yeah, good. So, I mean, okay, it's, it's, not, so it's not great. It's not great. Considering your internet, it should be great, right? But it's not. It's only like the topmost tier for Skype, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But we'll, we'll, we'll definitely figure it out. And uh, we'll overthrow the crows of uh, Zoom. Yeah. And we'll make it work. They but were um, suggesting... To have a password if you're using Zoom, because oh, right, yeah, yeah. then it's less likely to get hacked into. Okay, we'll definitely do that for sure. Yeah. There you go. What, what about WhatsApp? Does WhatsApp have video also on uh, on PCs? And you know, I know it has on phones. So yeah, I'm not sure. using WhatsApp. It's not as common. Uh, not in in the in the West. It's not as common. But you guys investigated. It's, it's very common in uh, in India. So whatever you think is best, you figure it out. Okay, okay. that sounds good to me. Well, does anyone have any final reflections or questions or comments, criticisms, anything that they would like to share before we end tonight? So, yes, I have one important uh, point if I can share. Absolutely. Prabhu, um, so, what if we hear good things from a crow, like a crow-like person? Yeah, good and, question. Yes. Yeah, Prabhupada said that uh, you should pick up gold wherever you find it, even if you find it in an unclean place. You know, if you see yes. gold in some place where it's dirty, you pick it up. 
because it's pure. So if the crow can give you spiritual knowledge, it's kind of unlikely. But uh, if you're thinking about Krishna constantly, then at least subconsciously, then sometimes the crow may say something like the guy out at the park I was telling you about. He, he, he made some comment that gave me an idea for a class. And I thought, wow, this is great. This fits in really wonderfully with the time. And it's, uh, this is a, a class that I should have given to go, but it wouldn't have made any sense because we didn't have so, enough. Yes. So yeah, Definitely, I think... but you have to be expert. You know, if you're yes. gonna get knowledge. Uh, I mean, if you need to, to know how to tune up your car, you may learn from someone who's not a devotee and doesn't know anything about scripture. He may teach you how to tune up your car or fix your computer. That's just fine. That's different, you see. Uh, <clears throat> the devotee may look at it like, I use my computer to serve Krishna, and some non-devotee teaches me how to make my computer work better so that I can do my service better. Then yeah. you're engaging him in this in devotional service. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So reason why I bring this up, uh, Prabhu, is um, so in this in this world, um, most people are uh, following duplicity or something called bigotry, um, uh -huh. where we where we follow where we say something, we follow something, and where we uh, follow something, we say something, or even we say sometimes we follow sometimes. Not all the times, uh -huh. and uh, and you see, we are you know uh, that's the reason we all have taken birth on this planet where we have um, all sorts of qualities, um, good, bad, and uh, ignorant qualities. So the reason why I bring up is you know there are um, people, uh, good people in this world who do who like let's say they have sixty percent of crow qualities, uh, forty percent of uh, swan qualities. Yeah. Uh, just because they're not um, they're not sadhu um, shastra or you know they don't have the association of devotees, I would think it would be um, losing self integrity and ourselves not to listen to them because we represent forty percent of their good qualities. When we ignore those forty percent of good qualities in them, we are actually ignoring our own good qualities. Yeah, so 40%, I would forty. If somebody has forty percent good qualities, then they're they're a very upstanding person. Yeah. So, so what I what I really want to say is, if we don't, uh, if we don't listen to what the crow says, like a swan, like what what it's speaking as a swan, then we are actually not recognizing the swan itself. Right. So, so what I'm saying is, Can we I... ourselves have to be swans to recognize what the crow is saying. You see what I mean? Um, yeah, and you might want to, you see someone that has some qualities like that, do your best to engage them in Krishna's service. You know? Maybe by your association, they'll become 100% swan. Could I add to that, please? Yes, please do. For some clarity, the verse doesn't refer to any people, but the knowledge itself of conversation topics. This uh, Krishna Kata is a pilgrimage of crow or swans, I mean, and all this other uh, mundane conversation is a pilgrimage of crows. Not that the people are crows, but that the conversation is where uh, uh, people tend to congregate here and swans will fly off. Not that they themselves, because uh, with this <laughs> down with crows rhetoric, uh, it, this isn't some code for segregation. It's it's to purify our conversation matter. Right, right. And oh, definitely, everyone. The Paramahamsas, who are the, the Hamsa, uh, it means swan like man, Paramahamsa. So there are the swan like and there are the crow like men. So he does indirectly talk about those who are crow like. Uh, the, and, he, and he points out that they like things like uh, literature that have to do with um, uh, sensual topics. So not that we push them down or criticize, but we recognize there is a difference in the mentality. Some people have 
more of a crow-like mentality, and others have a, more of a swan-like mentality. So, but it's not that we want to uh, unduly criticize people, not that we're better than. Does that make any sense? Yes, um, yes I, I think all of us understand we don't want, nobody here has any intention to make anyone a crow, um, you know, yeah, it's all metaphors we are mm -hmm. using. Um, I think everyone understands here. Yeah. Well, all of us, because yeah. we're devotees, we're seeing our, ourselves beneath the crows. You see? We're, we're lower than the crows in the, in the trees. Lower than the straw in the street and lower than the, the crows in the trees. So, yeah, it's not that we're trying to make ourselves out to be better than. No, we want to serve them. We want to give them Krishna consciousness and help them become swan-like. So, all right, folks. I think it's time we turn we uh, uh, turn it off. So, are there any more questions before we go? Comments? Anything I'm, else, Krishna? I'm sorry, Hare Krishna. Krishna. There we go. Krishna. You got last, last uh, questions or reflections? I just had a thought. Sure. You, you were, um, you've been under Prabhu, you were obviously part of the swan, as you were saying. A swan can be given milk and water, and they can siphon that milk out of the water, so they get the nectar. So it's almost as if you could read mundane literature, but because you have this Krishna conscious attitude, you sort of like siphon off the nectar out of even maybe the mundane literature. Well, the crows, if they're engaged in the crow-like literature, uh, they feel at home and they may, they may enjoy it on a different level, the devotee, the swan-like person, may see this type of literature and they can recognize the suffering. The, they mm. may see suffering where else someone else may see comedy or entertainment. We can see the suffering. Um, yeah, like said, in Todd's example, when he was watching the Charlie Chaplin movie, everyone else was laughing, you know, he yeah. could see that gift has come from Krishna. So he yeah. enjoyed it because he saw that Krishna was given that gift, was behind yeah. it. Yeah. All right. I hope all of you can join us Thursday night, same time, maybe the same station. Govinda Madhava will let you know uh, if it's this station or the Zoom station or whatever. So all of you take good care, take good care of yourselves, stay well, and take care of your devotional creeper. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you guys for coming out. Virtual closeness. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna Jai Raja. Jai. I'll put a little music here to. Hare Krishna Alfredo Gutierrez, Chris Casillas, Jagadish Anjan. Thank you for joining us. Hare Krishna. Jesse Mayor. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Krishna Nagas. Joseph, thank you for joining us. We'll see you guys very soon. This Sunday at 5.30. You don't want to miss it. This Sunday. Ah, this Thursday, sorry. <laughs> and Sunday, too. Maybe on the same station, maybe in Zoom. We'll see. Hare Krishna, folks. Rakshati Dukhani Karane Vajra
Krishna Nam Das. Prabhu, let me know if we should do the Zoom thing. Be really nice.